Welcome to No Borders with Brian and Carrie. So in this week's episode, what we are going to discuss is relationships while you're full-time traveling. So the key relationship we've had to deal with is traveling together as a couple full-time. Traveling with her. <laughs> and him. Uh, we've had to really just kind of navigate that new area of 24 20, seven together can be really challenging for some people. And we've had some questions asking about that. Yeah. But then there's also for solo travelers, you know, navigating also being out on the road by yourself and some, some ways to maybe find yourself to get connected right. in new places you're in and way to plug in that way. Uh, it will relationships back home, right? You know, your yeah. friends, your family, how do you navigate that? Mm -hmm. uh, how do you keep in touch? Um, and what does it all mean when you get back home? Right. Yeah. Cause that has been a learning curve for us. We have been doing this for two and a half years. So maybe our idea of what we started with and what we thought it was going to be like have very much kind of veered and changed. And we've had to just kind of work with the ebb and flows and, and change things up as yeah, we've gone along. Cha change our thought process mm -hmm. on how things actually yeah. uh, have worked and have, have gone up to this point. Mm -hmm. Now in this podcast, this is a podcast, mm -hmm. so you can find us on all of your uh, favorite podcast platforms. Mm -hmm. And thank you for those of you that are watching us on YouTube as well. Right. So if you are watching us on YouTube, uh, like Brian said, this is a podcast. So you may not see the normal like pictures coming up on the screen to entertain you and stuff. So the podcasts are shot just a little bit different. They're shot in a way so that we can sit back, have a little bit more relaxed conversation style engagement yeah, I, with each I other. I think the engagement of... uh, with us um, and with the listener or viewer mm -hmm. um, is a little more, we hope anyway, is a little more engaging. Mm -hmm. You can yeah. listen to this in your garage while you're uh, cleaning out the garage, <laughs> which you should probably do. Driving to work. Uh, driving to work, walking driving your to dog. Work. Yeah. Do it however you want. Mm -hmm. We don't care. We just appreciate you watching on YouTube and listening on your favorite podcast. Yeah. So first we're gonna start in with kind of our, so as a couple, traveling as a couple. And I think that, you know, for you and I, we first off, we started by, we had been dating only for six months and we went on a, a trip to Portugal yes. together. It was three weeks, just about three weeks long. Yes. Um, a was, lot of people. That was my idea, by it, the way. It was his idea. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people had asked us, numerous different people of, um, are you sure you want to go and travel together for three weeks with somebody that you really don't know that well yet? First off, yeah. we had obviously had not lived together. We really were still in those earlier dating time. Right. First off, nobody asked me that. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure uh, Carrie had plenty of people ask her that. Um, uh, but I was, I was confident mm -hmm. and, and I was ready to go. Right. Um, and, and, um, we got out there. We ran into a couple speed bumps. It was my first time overseas, mm -hmm. uh, really, um, as an adult anyway. And um, we hit a couple speed bumps. But I wouldn't say the speed bumps were personal speed bumps. No, they, they were, were speed bumps as far as they transportation. Were, or, and... or finding the Airbnb mm -hmm. in Lagos. Uh, right. We couldn't yeah. find it. And it was a frustrating moment for both of yeah. us. Uh, but we both handled it very well yeah and we found the airbnb we worked together it's, and that was kind of the first indication where i was like yeah she's all right well and that actually is kind of a funny story so we we were in long Hush and we're looking for our airbnb and uh you know you have the information you have the directions of course our cell service or we can't get a hold of the airbnb host we cannot find the airbnb anywhere we walked the streets, we parked our car, yep. and we walked the streets around the little community there for a good hour and a half. It was hot. It was hot. We it were was thirsty. Miserable. We had been, it was a travel day, so we had been traveling and navigating, figuring all out. Right. And um, it was well past too thirsty. It was too well. thirsty had come and gone like two hours ago. Yeah. And so um, I finally <clears throat> pulled open uh, the Airbnb site. And I was looking at pictures, you know, and so that's always a great place to go back to. We've done that again since. Uh, and I was able to find a picture of the balcony, looking at the balcony from outside. And so the railing was very specific. It was black and stuff. And so we were able to narrow it down like that. We walked around the neighborhood looking for a black railing. Mm -hmm. We found it. We punched the code, the door popped open 
and we were golden. Yeah, but, but that was, was after you tried the code on a couple other people's houses too. A couple, too. yeah. <laughs> I would just be embarrassed and like go hide. Cause yeah. I'm like, we know that's not our place. Uh, but you know, so those were those moments that I think that other people even that we have talked to have said that the moments that you are going to be tested when you are traveling internationally is with directions. You know, either yeah. you're trying to find a place in a car and navigating, you're trying to find your Airbnb, you're trying to get onto a train, you're trying, whatever it is that you're trying to navigate. Whatever it might be. Is the area that's going to push those buttons. Yeah. 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 And, and how do you react when those buttons are pushed right. is the key uh, element in all that. Yeah. And I think we found early on on that vacation that uh, our, our buttons didn't really get push to the point where they boiled over. Well, and I it think was that's just, key. Yeah, it was just, um, we were we were pretty relaxed together. Yeah. We were able to both just be like, okay, we're gonna figure it out. I mean, not to say that our nerves weren't up there. We but, were pretty shot. Yeah. And, and I think that um, a couple things factored into that. Um, some of um, our individual history mm -hmm. factored into that. And I think, um, and let's be honest, I think the newness of the relationship only mm -hmm. six months in might have factored into that. True. But all that being said, um, we realized that, hey, uh, we can do this. Yeah. And that's when the wheels started to spin on uh, full-time travel or mm -hmm. at least traveling more the way we are now. Right. Yeah. So, you know, so that right there just kind of showed us that we'd be able to handle a lot of situations. Um, so then, you know, we get out onto the road and there's a lot of areas that you have to navigate that you're not used to. It's not a vacation. You're not going home after three weeks. You're not going back to a job where you don't see each other for a good nine, 10 hours during the right. day. And then you get to just enjoy that evening together. You're together 24 seven. And I know for plenty of people, that's a concern, you know, yeah. because I know that in say past relationships, it's like, okay, could I have spent that much time with this person and been totally fine? Um, there might've been a lot of red flags and a lot of concerns. A lot of concerns. You know, we do get this question. How do you spend all this time with <laughs> her? Or how do you spend all this time with him? Mm -hmm. Depending on who's asking the question. Well, I think, when you get into the situation that we're in, um, you learn, and again, some of this comes off uh, history, but you learn to compromise. Mm -hmm. And if I have a different idea than she has, well, if I'm willing to just drop my needs and uh, cater to her needs, she's gonna see that and she's gonna reciprocate that the next time. If you get into the habit mm -hmm. of trying to please your partner, so to speak, mm -hmm. it becomes habit forming. Yeah. And you know what? There are times that we each want to have our way. Right. And no, this is how I want this to happen. Mm -hmm. This is what I want to do. Okay. Yeah. That's, let's do that. Mm -hmm. Let's do that. And I can pretty much guarantee you down the road, it might be a month from now, it might be two months from now, it's going to be reciprocated. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's habit forming. It is. I think there's also just a relaxation that comes now, um, partly because we have been doing it for a while, but also because we are slow travelers. Now, when we are in a place for a month and we're just doing day trips here and there and um, our navigation, we don't have to do a whole lot. We're a lot more relaxed. Yeah. And so, you know, when we do have a travel day, our patience level is a lot higher because we're not doing all of that all the time. So right. I, w I think that, you know, if we look back at the times when maybe our uh, patience was a lot lower, it's when we're moving around a lot faster and um, we're navigating a new bus or a new Airbnb and, and, and how to get around or new currency and new everything every few days. Right. Not that we were not getting along, but the nerves might have been a little bit higher, you know. Um, so I think that what I would say we have learned, and I know what I have learned a lot in this, is that kind of just asking yourself, does it really matter? Does it really matter? Is it really that big yeah. of a deal? Is it worth you know, it? Yeah. This is your human you're with all the time. And uh, you might be in a country where nobody else speaks English. So it's not like you're going to hop out and go and be like, fine, I'm going to go see my friends for a while. You really don't, don't have this option. So yeah. you learn to be 
maybe tolerant of a lot of those things that annoyed you um, in the past or, or whatever. So I think we've navigated pretty well around yeah. it. Um, you know, I, I think another area of navigation is the whole 24 seven together. There's a lot of couples that, you know, you're built very differently. So one area for me, um, we will get together, we'll meet people and go out and say, grab a couple beers or whatever. The one area where I'd say we've had a couple moments of tension and we've learned now or that, you know, Brian knows this side of me. Right. Is that when we come home from those, I'm very much an introvert. And so by the time we've come home, I'm done. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to, I just, and it's not me in mean mode. I'm not in a bad mood. I just want to sit there in my zone and I might just be on my phone doing nothing where you still are kind of in that mode of like, that was fun. Yeah. And kind of wanting to talk. Yeah. Let's go get some more beers. And that to me pushes probably every button I have <laughs> because I just want silence. And so, but we have, we've learned to navigate that. You've learned that. all that over yeah. time. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, so I, I just need to learn to know uh, when to shut up. Um, and, 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 and at the same time, um, she has learned, yeah, you know, it is a lot of fun to go meet mm -hmm. people on the road and have a few beers. Yeah. Whereas, you know, quite honestly, before she was a little bit reluctant to do that. I, yeah. yeah now, now she's ready to go. It was, yeah, it wasn't, so we, it wasn't my cup of tea to yeah. start, but I, you know, we do enjoy it. And it's also something I know that Brian very much needs and right. enjoys. And so those are those compromises that you make when I'm there. I enjoy it. I'm not trying to say that. So of course, if you're somebody we met up with, yeah. I'm not saying I didn't enjoy myself. I just, it takes a lot more energy out of me. Yeah. It takes a lot of energy out of you. Yeah. You enjoyed it. You, you enjoyed the idea before we left. Mm -hmm. You were looking forward enjoyed. to it. Mm -hmm. You were excited about it. You did it. And then you got home and you were exhausted. It just, it meant, right. well, anybody who's an introvert is going to be able to re relate with that. Right. I know that. So, uh, cause I know plenty of people are like, oh, that's exactly how I am. So, you know, that's something we've had to navigate. Um, you know, the other thing I would say that, you know, in the start, we kind of did everything together and now there'll be times that, you know, you'll go for a jog, mm -hmm. I'll work out at home. Um, we don't need to go do those things together. So, you know, go find those things that you're going to enjoy doing yourself yeah. and you don't need to have your partner go along with you and that kind of also gives you that space and alone time right with that being said i would not want to do this without carrie obviously right. but without a partner mm -hmm. uh, experiencing new things experiencing uh, uh new foods new scenes just newness of everything um to share it with somebody yeah. i think to me is very important. Yeah. I think that at the end of the day, you know, I have traveled a little bit on my own and when at the end of the day, when you don't have somebody to share all those experiences from the day with, um, it can be kind of lonely and we'll kind of go into some of the solo travel yeah. options and stuff as well of ways to kind of connect yourself. Okay. Now that brings us into, uh, solo traveling. Mm -hmm. Um, I couldn't do it without you. Mm -hmm. Could you do it without me? I wouldn't, you probably could. I wouldn't want to do it without right. you. I could do it, but um, you know, because once again, I think a, I can. I'm good with like a quiet time, alone time. Right. But I appreciate also what traveling as a couple brings. See, I couldn't do it because I get bored. I could. I could do it. I could navigate it. Mm -hmm. I could get myself around, but I couldn't do it as far as. I need somebody to annoy. I need somebody to poke. <laughs> you need somebody to talk to. I need to. somebody to talk to. Poke to. The bear. Yeah, I need to poke and talk and and, yeah. and and irritate just to a certain level. Yeah. To where it's still funny. You could put me in a cabin in the woods for yeah. a week, two <clears throat> weeks, and I don't see another human, yeah. and I'm really just fine. <laughs> yeah, and so for you, uh, embracing the solitude mm -hmm. would be something that you would be very uh, into doing. Yeah. Um, you know, the confidence that you would gain from that would probably right. be um, astronomical. Right. So, know. and I think that's one of the beauties of traveling solo is that you are very much forced out of your comfort zone on pretty much a regular basis, yeah. right? So um, everything that you're doing, you're doing and navigating on your own. You don't have that partner to bounce things off of and be like, hey, what is your, this is what my phone is saying. We're navigating to, this doesn't look right. Um, you're figuring it all out on your own. Uh, you know, I think that's totally 100% doable and plenty of people do it. Um, now there's some area, there's kind of some things you can do though to make it a, a little more enjoyable. Well, I, I think I think you're forced to. Mm -hmm. I think if you're a solo traveler, yeah. um, if I was a f solo traveler, wanting that interaction, 
wanting to engage, um, I would be forced to immerse myself in different ways right. than we currently do. Yeah. I would be forced to um, go out by myself and strike up a conversation with a local. Mm -hmm. um, we don't do enough of that now. We should do more of that. Yeah. Um, and, and it will come. I would say one advantage we do have though over a lot of people is because we do YouTube. We have had the wonderful opportunity to meet up with a lot yes. of our viewers that they either reach out to us or, or vice versa or whatever because we are in the same place at the same time. And so we do have that ability, which is very nice because if we didn't have that, we would have to go do the other, but I think that we might not do that so much because we do the other. Right. Um, but I think for a solo traveler, if you're traveling around and you want to say, meet some local people, even if it's expats and not locals from that area, from that area you know, sure. but you want to meet some people that maybe you want to be able to go on hikes or go on excursions with or whatever, you know, get yourself involved in, say, a Facebook group, even before going to that area. There's tons of different Facebook groups. I'm not going to say there's one for every place you're going to travel to, but there's a ton of them out there. Oh. Uh, the research that I had done on them, people could get into these Facebook groups and then they ended up like they traveled together places because you met people and then you actually had this other person that, you know, I'm not saying that you're staying in the same actual room or whatever, right. but you were traveling along with people. Um, but even just getting to a new well, location. We had a gentleman just the other day on, on YouTube comment that uh, he's involved with his Rotary Club back home and there's Rotary Clubs all over the world. Mm -hmm. And he goes to Rotary meetings, mm -hmm. wherever he's at. Yeah. and meets all kinds of people. Yeah. Things like that are, are very accessible and they're great ideas. Right. You know, you're, you're meeting locals, you're meeting expats. I think leading the way for us right now is the Australians. We've met more Aussies on the road than yeah. I think any other country. So there's your challenge right there. Yeah. You know, for those of you that aren't uh, from Australia. Yeah. So I think that there's plenty of ways for solo travelers to get I don't know, to make sure that they're maintaining or building relationships, not necessarily maintaining other relationships. We'll cover that in a little bit, but I think just building new relationships, just get involved, go to those places, get out there. I mean, that yeah. is one of the things. You're, you wouldn't be on the road traveling solo, I guess, unless you're like me. I'd probably just get into my Airbnb and not go anywhere. Just, yeah, <laughs> I would just go know. explore by myself and come home. Um, but you know, I just think that there's so many opportunities on getting involved with other people. Um, once again, just all the different platforms that are out there and uh, just navigate that and figure that out. Well, another, another advantage to uh, just being a solo traveler, if that's what you're into, is you always get your way. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to, you always get your way. Mm -hmm. uh, but the flexibility that comes with getting your way, going to countries that um, um, you wouldn't otherwise go to or, or didn't plan on going to until mm -hmm. last minute, this is your schedule, it's your time, you do what you want to do. And yeah. that's someplace, Carrie, that, you know, you might enjoy. <laughs> so actually, I was I'm not encouraging that. No, but a funny, funny kind of story on that of, so the time that I did travel alone, one of the takeaways that I did have from that, which I thought was really kind of a positive is, and I've talked to other people that said the same thing, was that say you want to go shopping and I'm not a huge shopper, but if I, if there is a store that I want to go into and I want to linger about for a very long time at my own pace without now you were fantastic at going, I'll just wait outside. Right. <laughs> but you know, they're waiting, you know, they're standing there, you know, they don't want to be there any longer than they are. And so I just remember being able to go into these shops and stores and just linger about by myself. And now what I've learned instead of there'll be times if we're in a place where we have a bunch of shops, like where we are right now, we have mm -hmm. all these shops around us and stores. So, I'm sure there'll be a day because we just got here. Then I'm like, hey, I'm going to go and yeah. shop around because I just want to walk into these stores, stores leisurely and you don't want somebody waiting on you. Right. So I would say that is one of the big benefits of being a solo traveler is that you do not have anybody other schedule that you're. Yeah, you don't have to, to worry around. about other people's feelings. Yeah, that is you true. Know? And so um, and I had my feelings removed uh, a while ago, a long time ago before I met Carrie. So. Um, <laughs> you know, she can pretty much do what she wants to do and she won't hurt my feelings. That's not true. <laughs> That's not true. So what about, what about our relationships back home now? Yeah. Because those relationships, um, are better in a lot of ways mm -hmm. and they're not as 
strong as maybe they were in other ways. Yeah. I think that um, when we first left, we, you know, you have this vision, vision in your head of how exactly that's all going to play out. You know, you're like, oh, yeah. we'll be back twice a year. We'll get together with our friends. Um, and we do. But mm -hmm. that has very much changed. And I would say even the friends we have that we might have thought were really close friends, those friendships have changed now. Um, and not that you're not still friends with them or acquaintances with them, but they're not necessarily the ones that are right on your radar when you are home. Because, for instance, you never hear from them at all while you're traveling. Um, and that's a two-way street. I'm not saying that it's one way or the other. But you, you kind of learn those relationships yeah. that are the, the long-lasting, forever relationships and the relationships that we're willing to put the effort into when we do get home. Well, you know, social media is a real easy way mm -hmm. <clears throat> to keep in touch with anybody back home. Mm -hmm. It's an easy way for them to keep in touch with you while you're on the road. Um, you're still only a... Uh, Instagram message away or a Facebook messenger message away or, mm -hmm. or a text away and it is really easy now there's might be some time zone differences where you might not get back to the person right away mm -hmm. but that's okay and one thing that we kind of had to remember as well is when we go home all of our friends because we do consider them all still friends mm -hmm. yeah. but they have uh, full-time jobs yeah. uh, in some cases kids um, other obligations Besides just the fact that I'm home. Well, and they're they're still going about their regular normal they're, life. They're not so regular We never life, expect right. people to drop everything. It's right. like Brian and Carrie are home. In no <laughs> way did we ever expect that. Yeah. But those things do change. Mm -hmm. And and the the friends the friends that you uh, um, how should I say this really care about they're the ones that tend to keep in touch with you and vice versa the mm -hmm. most. Yeah. Um, and so I would say. Those relationships, for me anyway, the time I do spend with those friends is much more quality time. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more conversation that goes between you besides just throwing darts in the garage and drinking crappy light beer, which is always a good time, mm -hmm. but it's less, it's, it's a lot more shallow, I guess, yeah. than it's what, a lot more repetitive, it's just re get togethers right. where it was kind of same conversation and everything. And now, now when we do have that time with those friends, we both walk away feeling like it's a much more quality time. Much more quality time. Mm -hmm. And that's just with the friends. Right. Now with the families, um, well, that goes without saying. The families, you know, when we first um, were doing this and we were, you know, going home twice a year and you get home and you just have this, it's like you got to rush and see everybody and everything. What we walked away with and quickly realized is the time that we're spending with our family now doing what we're doing, even though we are, now we're gonna be going home three times a year, but uh, for shorter stretches each time. But the time that we were home, we spent so much more quality time with our kids and with our parents and friends than we were doing when we lived there. Right. Because, yeah. you know, you think about it and from our experience, when we're living in the same town with our parents and with uh, my kids, I, one of your kids is nearby, um, you know, you get together for dinner and it's typically a weekend dinner. You got work on Monday. It's like, okay, I, I got to get going. I got to go. And so you're there a couple hours, but you kind of feel like there's always this time clock clicking and right. or ticking and you got to get going. And what we have now is we go and we can stay at our we have parents. sleepovers. And we have sleepovers, sleepovers at our now. parents' house, yeah. which we hadn't done that. Yeah, sleepovers, um, and you get up in the morning, and you drink coffee, yeah. and you have more conversation. Mm -hmm. And it's just, uh, I think it's more its more of an impactful relationship now yeah. um, than, it, than maybe it was before. Mm -hmm. um, you don't take those relationships, whether they're friends or family, for granted maybe as much as you did before. Right. Yeah. Um, so you, uh, you want to hang on to them. And, and we've always said, you know, um, I'll put as much effort into a friendship um, as a friend puts into me. Right. You yeah. know, and um, so it's a two-way street, mm -hmm. and um, I'm, I'm grateful for the ones I have. Yeah. So I think that navigating, you know, those family relationships, friend relationships, and just any of those lasting relationships that you are going to continue to have, you're going to just learn a new 
a way to do that via either social media or, you know, some of my friends I don't really have great contact with, but as soon as I'm home, they're like right. on it and they're contacting me and we're getting together and we have a great time and it's like no time has passed. And, you know, um, you just learn just like everything in life is uh, there's just a new ebb and flow. You're just going to find it, navigate it and figure out a different way, a different way it works. And like we mentioned, we're going to be going home three times a year. And so, you know, that was one of those don't take for granted certain things right. of that, you know, our realization of that, you know, we don't want any regrets. We don't want to ever look back and be like, oh, we were gone for six months. We missed this or this or whatever. You know, it kind of feels different to be able to be like, okay, we're going to be back in three months. So like even for instance, this time we're gone for four and a half months and then we're going to get on our new schedule. When you walk out that door and you say goodbye and it's three months instead of, I mean, we've done upward of seven. Right. That was really hard for me. You know, I reached the four month point and I kind of hit a wall and I'm ready to see my kids and my grandkids, and my parents and friends. Um, and so three months for me is going to, I wouldn't say easy, but in a way, kind it's of It's a lot easier. easier. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I would agree, you know, there are things that I want to do and see and people I want to be around um, more mm. often than, than every six months or so. Mm. So, um, yeah, I think the relationship building, um, I honestly believe it starts with us mm -hmm. and it ends with whomever that friend is, right? you know, and, and that's just kind of the way I believe in it. And I've got a few friends that I really enjoy being around and that'll never change. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe you do too. Oh, I absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, well, we hope that this was interesting to you. And I guess the key takeaway would be that it's all doable you're going to figure out how it works and however that is. Like we said, you changed to I'm going home three times a year, or maybe you'll only go home once a year or whatever it is, but you're going to figure out what works. And as far as your couple relationship, you know, it's new, all of it's brand new. You're thrown right in the mix of it. And there might be some little hiccups along the way, but take those with stride and know that, you know, you just have to kind of figure each other out and how this new life is going to work. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's completely doable. Have some patience. Yeah. So we appreciate you watching. Uh, you can also find us on all of our other platforms of, uh, like we mentioned, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram. And then of course we're also on YouTube and those are all at Brian and Carrie. You can also find us on our website, which is Brian and Carrie travels.com. Uh, on there, you can sign up for a link to get our weekly newsletter. So do that as well. A lot of tips in that newsletter. You don't yes. want to miss those. <laughs> all right. We'll catch you next time. Cheers. Cheers.